Greg Bill Sargrass, welcome to this episode of The World Around Us. We're doing another virtual lab. We're doing a heat exchange virtual lab. And this is a, a concept in the work in energy. This is a type of energy. This is the thermal energy. We're going to talk about thermal energy. So quick definition, thermal energy is that energy that is, that is stored in the kinetic energy of a materials molecules. So as we learned from our kinetic theory of matter long ago, molecules are all in motion and the higher the temperature, the faster that motion is. Faster motion, according to our law of kinetic energy, faster motion means more energy. So when we have an object that is hot, it has a lot of kinetic energy, the, each of the molecules. And when it comes in contact with something that is not as hot, the interaction between those molecules will transfer some of that energy from one substance to the other. So that's heat transfer. And the, the principle is that because of the law of conservation, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. You can only change forms or change location or redistribute or whatever, but it can't. So we have something that's hot and we put it into something that is less hot. The energy, that hot energy, the, the higher kinetic energy is going to be transferred to the other substance. So if you are a, uh, a warm person and you go out into a cold air, the energy on your skin will transfer into the cold air around you and then you will perceive that as energy lost. You'll perceive that as being cold. If you take a soda out of the refrigerator and you put it on the table, the warm air of the, t of the room will begin to transfer that energy to the soda and then the soda will warm up. The amount of energy that's transferred is the same. So the principle is heat lost is equal to heat gained. All right, so we need to understand a little bit about how the uh, temperature change tells us how much energy was lost. So each object, each substance in nature has something called a specific heat and that specific heat is, is the amount of energy that it takes to change one gram of the substance or one kilogram, whatever the, the constant is, we're using grams. And um, so to change it one degree Celsius, one Celsius degree, which is the same as one Kelvin degree because a Kelvin degree and a Celsius degree are the same magnitude, uh, even though they're different on the scale. So in an equation, uh, we use the variable Q to stand for heat energy. So the, the temperature change times this mass times the specific heat. So it's just three numbers multiplied together. And delta T is one thing, change in temperature. We find delta T by taking the initial temperature and subtracting it from the final temperature. And so we'll see that uh, spaces to work that out on the lab worksheet. And so in the experiment we're going to do, we have a, a hot metal sample and it is going to go into the water. So the, the hot metal sample is going to go into the water. The energy from that hot metal sample will transfer into the water. So we'll see the water temperature go up. <clears throat> so I got my safety goggles and I have my tweezers. And so we're using a, uh, an induction heater on a, a sand bath to get a, a, a hot temperature and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the temperature readings on the, the video directly so you can see the uh, here's the readings in the sand bath you're going to need to record these now there is a companion lab sheet that you can uh, use to work out the, the, the lab for yourself so we're going to have energy from this is high it's going to go into here so the energy is going to go from the hot metal sample into the water. All right, so we're going to need to know the mass of the sample and we're going to need to know the mass of the water. And so those are provided for you on the screen here. So you can record those into the lab worksheet. And once you've recorded those into the lab worksheet, then we're going to go ahead and, and so the temperatures are, are, are uh, on the screen as well. So now we're going to move it over and we're going to watch as the temperature of the water, it's not going to go up a lot because water has a very high specific heat and metal generally is much lower. So we're going to, we're going to take the hot sample out of the sand bath, if we can, yep, and then we're going to put it into the water. And the water temperature is going to go up. We'll let a little time lapse here and then we'll get to the final temperature. 
Hi, I'm Bill Sarras, and welcome to this world. Uh, yeah, welcome to this world. It's, you know, because you might have come from somewhere else. Let's try again. All right, so there's the there's the final temperature for you. Um, there's the final temperature. So the uh, initial temperature uh, stayed the same because you know I haven't I haven't turned off the induction heater, so the temperature reading is still the same. And the final temperature of the water is this. So, so there's your, your temperature. Range. So the, the energy from the sand bath, it was, it was stored inside the molecules of the metal sample. So the energy that the metal sample had in the initial condition, that energy redistributed into the water. And so now the water and the metal sample are the same temperature. So we can, we can calculate the amount of energy gained by the water because we know the specific heat of water. We know the mass of the water. And we now know the temperature change of the water. So the mass times the temperature change times the specific heat of water that will tell us how much heat was gained by the water. That is also equal to the amount of heat that was lost by the metal sample. So we can take the heat lost, that's going to be Q, equals the mass of the sample and the change in temperature of the sample and went from this temperature to that temperature. So now we can calculate C. We can use that C, once we've calculated it, we can use that C to estimate what the metal sample is made out of. And we can look that up and, and here's a, there is in the video description a link and in the lab worksheet a link to some specific heats that you can use to look up what type of metal this might be. That is it for this episode. Uh, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next episode. I don't know, probably, probably enough. Plus the battery's done. I knew I should have changed the battery.